Heath Ledger, Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston all had traces of the anti-anxiety drug Xanax in their bodies when they died. In Australia in the past year, there has been a Xanax explosion, prescribed more than a million times by family doctors, and that's not counting the growing black market. And that's frightening because what so many don't realise is that Xanax is more addictive than heroin and ordinary Australians are suffering extraordinary side effects. This story was brought to our attention by Dr Tanvir Ahmed, one of Australia's leading psychiatrists. Danielle Hannan was a striking Sydney socialite, a fashion model who spoke three languages. Ten years ago, a doctor prescribed Xanax for her anxiety. Look what it's done to her. Well, I get up in the morning and about, if I, if I haven't taken even half, I'll be hallucinating. And so that's why it's so important. So I've got to get, take one now. I just, just on a horrible taste. Um, when I first took it, it gave me the most incredible feeling of just numbness in my brain, P pushed past the horrible, horrible past behind me. Danielle is now 47 and a Xanax addict. She spends her days in her little flat with her partner, Charlie, Hi, Dr. Dante. How are you? She's been Dr. Tanvir Ahmed's patient for close to four years, and truth be told, no. he's struggled to help. Now, I understand you've you've tried to come off it before, haven't you? Yes. It was the worst thing I've ever been through. Tell me about it. I went completely mad. I want to get the word out there that, you know, you can have everything you can that you worked hard for in your life, and you can lose it in a second. Xanax took my life. It took my life and, you know, doctors want to give it so easily and it's so dangerous. Nicole Shellard was a model mum, an occupational therapist from a wealthy family. I'm Nicole, thank you so much for doing the interview. My name's Tanvir. I've come all the way from Australia. I think you're being very courageous. Come and sit down. Thank you very much. Now she's a model prisoner unable to explain to her children how the blackouts caused by Xanax destroyed her life and left a stranger dead. I think it's really hard for them to just understand what happened to their mom, who was doing really good, who was functioning, to my mom's in jail now because she killed someone with her car. Xanax is the most potent anti-anxiety drug on the market a powerful version of Valium that works fast. What concerns Tanvir Ahmed is how powerfully addictive Xanax is. When I started practising medicine a decade ago, Xanax was virtually unknown. Now, it's the most popular pill of its kind. More than a million prescriptions were written last year in Australia. That's a quadrupling in 10 years. And that's what concerns me scares me that so many people have no idea that this little pill is more addictive than heroin. We know Heath Ledger had Xanax in his system. We know Michael Jackson had Xanax in his system. And of course, Whitney Houston. They're desperate. They've tried this drug. They tried that drug. And in the benzos, the sedatives, that whole group of drugs, the most potent available drug is Xanax. Dr. Peter Bregan is an American psychiatrist who has been warning about the dangers of Xanax since it was first approved for use in the US. Over 20 years ago, you thought Xanax should be taken off the market. If it had been taken off the market, uh, we probably have a million or more people alive who are dead now. Does it even work for what it's meant to work for, anxiety? It will work if you take one once in a while to dampen your emotions. It works by disabling your brain. You will get some effect of reducing your anxiety. But there's a lot of problems with it. 
The more you take it, the more the brain's fighting back, and the more you're creating anxiety. So in the studies that we use for FDA approval for Xanax, by eight weeks, the patients were worse. They were in serious withdrawal. Up to a third of them couldn't even get off the drug. After eight weeks, they couldn't get off the drug. That's how addictive it is. I always knew I was bright when I was in school. And I could have pretty much been anything I wanted to be. Um... Daniel Polite hasn't had a Xanax tablet since yesterday. Yeah, I'm sort of having a half mini attack now. My heart's all racing away, so. In 1992, Daniel was one of the first Australians prescribed Xanax. He was 14. The anxiety he's experiencing is a symptom of Xanax withdrawal. It's a, a mental thing, really, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even need to have one, but I, you know, if I know the bottle's in my pocket, uh, yeah, the anxiety's not as bad. Doctors first gave him the tablets to control panic attacks, but Daniel quickly became addicted. It's a, it's a nasty sort of like illness to have. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of did, did something. Yeah. <laughs> they freak out. <laughs> um. Eventually, it becomes too much, and after 24 hours without Xanax, Daniel reaches for a tablet, a sign of his addiction. They give me seven a week now. It's one a day. Some common things when people come off Xanax, like they might hallucinate. Sometimes they have. I've had hallucinations. I've fitted once, um, but I used to have a yeah, a, a strong. Um, is it a? <clears throat> oh, it's, sorry, mate. I. Um, You're on take time. The question you just asked, and I, just before this, yeah. Can I get you to say it again? I uh, was just, um, what was it like when you didn't get the tablets? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was just a nightmare. Daniel was married and had a solid job with Telstra. He lost it all when he couldn't kick Xanax and the feeling the tablets gave him. They uh, relaxed me, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I could think clearer. Um, it stops, the, you know, the anxiety shaking. Doing head miles, what should I say? What should I say? You know, all these sort of things. And, yeah. Now I understand sometimes, you know, you ended up in hospital. Yeah, because I've had too many. Yeah, I've been strapped down, all that sort of stuff, yeah. What permanent damage can Xanax cause on our brains? Uh, we're getting more and more evidence that long term you get dementia. And this should be no shock. You can't impair cognitive functions day after day after day after day after day and expect the brain to not get worse and worse. So not only are you losing cognitive function, people are losing periods of time. They don't remember going to their daughter's wedding. They don't remember the vacation they took with family. They start to lose their sense of identity for a period of years that they've been on Xanax. It's just bad news. The health of this nation is under attack from many different directions. And we're not even talking about health. We're talking about freedom. Yeah. Because when you lose your health, you are no longer free. New York's Long Island is a community in crisis. Behind the gleaming facade is a prescription drug problem of frightening proportions. People look at your life and they think you have everything because you live in this beautiful area, you have maids, you have Mercedes, you have BMWs, you have money, you have no problems. And inside that home was so many problems. Nicole Shellard was an anxious teenager from a wealthy family. She had a master's degree, a career and two young boys. But when her marriage began to crumble, so did she. Her doctor prescribed Xanax.
and I thought that's, that it was helping me and it was just hurting me. On a spring afternoon in May 2010, Nicole was driving. She'd taken several Xanax, and one of its side effects is blackouts. I remember getting in my car, putting my seatbelt on, and I don't remember anything after that. Riding her bike along the same stretch of road was a popular local hairdresser, Catherine Underwood. Against the force of Nicole Shellard's car, Catherine didn't stand a chance. Nicole doesn't remember a thing. When did you realise the full extent of what happened? It was my first morning in jail, and um, the inmates threw the paper in my cell. And they said, how do you feel that you killed somebody? And I was in 23 and a half hour lockdown in a cell, and I was staring at my picture and this woman's picture, and I, I, I was in total and complete shock. Nicole was convicted of manslaughter, her case became a lightning rod for a community struggling with the dark side of Xanax abuse. As of recently, um, it's become uh, somewhat questionable coming to work. Uh, the, the question being, uh, will I come home at night? Don Cantalino is a well-known local pharmacist. In the past six months, colleagues, customers and a policeman have all been shot dead in pharmacies by addicts. I now carry a weapon. Um, and I never thought I'd get to that point. You carry a gun? I carry a gun. Um, it's not something I ever wanted to do, but it is what the situation has pushed me to. Um, and my theory is I'd rather be judged by 12 jurors than carried by six pole bearers. All of these prescriptions uh, have been forged and we have made copies of them. Across Long Island, chemists are installing elaborate security. On the black market, a single Xanax tablet is worth up to $100. To put that in perspective, a bottle of generic Xanax that costs a chemist $30 is worth $30,000 on the street. Another aspect to this is organised crime has infiltrated uh, the, the scenario. We have complete uh, shipments of drugs from manufacturers en route to wholesalers um, being stolen. It's pretty big right now, coming out in the western suburbs. So I think what people are doing, they're trying to chase heroin, and they can't get that, so they get the Xanax to bleach them off out. Well, who prescribed it to you now? A medical centre in Penrith. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever give it out to anyone else? Never. Everyone knows not to bustle me for medication. Yeah. Have you heard? I don't care if it offers me some like fifty bucks or one. I, I, I won't sell it. Yeah. Is there a market rate for it? Oh. Uh, How much would that be? Between three and five dollars a tablet. Push me. You push me you Dr Tanvir Ahmed believes it's time the federal government acted. It's time Xanax was made harder to get. What's your advice to the Australian government regarding Xanax? Oh, be the first government to ban the drug. Be the first government to take a stand on this horrendous drug and at the least give out warnings that it causes violence and suicide and depression. And if you take it more than uh, two or three weeks, you're heading for serious trouble. But I think it's a drug that doctors shouldn't give out. And Pfizer, the makers of Xanax, have provided a statement which is on our website. They stand by the drug for short-term treatment of anxiety. Also on our website, you'll find links to helplines for people concerned about drug addiction.